Now here's a way for hospitals and doctors and medical technologists and drug companies to make money. Give hospital patients sleeping pills. Oh, you're getting a little ruthless with that, but there's a point. Well, it makes them fall, <laughs> well, and then that's you right. end up having more lab tests and that's scans right. and x-rays and, and pain pills longer hospital stays, and yep. then they might get complications like blood clots. Right. You know, Ambien isn't it's just true. seen on television it, for over-the-counter use. It's like commonly prescribed as a standing order in hospitals for patients to help them sleep, and it quadruples their risk of falling. Yeah, it's a big deal. And while you're making a little bit of fun about it, it's true. And I'm sure that the reason that people do it isn't, I mean, doctors prescribe it, isn't because they, wanna <laughs> they make, don't want to make more money. Fall. I mean, basically, but they're looking for a way to solve the problem of insomnia in the hospital. And this has been what's been traditional. So very often the standing orders that we leave are for lots of things like milk and magnesia or colase or, you know, if you have bowel problems or if you can't sleep, this or a sedative like Valium. So all those things are considered standing orders. They often are. Uh, each doctor individualizes what's going to be given for each particular patient. So uh, the doctor wouldn't prescribe it for somebody who had a certain kind of problem for sure. I mean, if somebody just had a stroke, chances are they're not going to give a sleeping pill to them because that masks the, the level of consciousness that a patient has, and we need to follow that carefully. But, you know, Ambien has other side effects, too, and one, oh. of, them, one of them is sleepwalking. I was thinking about that, and I oh. thought, well, maybe if a person takes it and then they, they get up in the middle of the night well, and they're sleepwalking, then happen. they could fall. Well, it makes you ataxic, too, so your balance isn't right. It make you dizzy. It can cause delusions, and it can make you hallucinate. You get headaches and nausea and vomiting and rebound problems if you try to stop it. In fact, you didn't get like seizures a, this, from it. This is sounding like an ad for Amazon. Well, you know, it, <laughs> we just don't have the flowery music in the background. <laughs> well, that's what the ads are like. They're saying all these things that that it can do, like put you to sleep, and then the last. 20 minutes of the ad, they're focusing on all the problems that, that happen like this and saying it with a sweet voice, but it's a big deal. But you know, when people are sick, it really is important that they get enough sleep. Oh, and I remember years ago, um, I think it was in the 70s, mm -hmm. when the patients were given Valium. That was the popular drug of choice in those days, and they would take. We would give it to them about three or four times a day. Yeah, well, by that's the true. afternoon, everybody's sleeping. That's right. <laughs> it made our work a lot easier. But you know, they found out over the years that this had an accumulative effect, and it was very habit forming and oh. not a healthy thing to do. Lots of problems. So we could make hospitalizations. Uh, more comfortable by helping people sleep using other technologies. We used to give people back rubs. Well, that and, and listening to them and... Uh, and using that music that we've talked about so exactly. many times. Or the brainwave optimization we talked about where you try and balance the two sides of the, of the brain using certain kinds of sounds. There are lots of things that we can do that are a lot safer than uh, using a drug. And so I think hospitals are, are starting to see that when you're looking at three or four times as many people having falls and about 3% of people who take these drugs having a fall compared to 0.7%, you're talking about a lot of extra cases of trauma with fractured hips and, and, and uh, fractured skulls and, and subdural hematomas. It's, it's not a small thing. You know, I was thinking that all the patients' rooms have TV monitors. Uh -huh. Wouldn't it be neat if they would put in like a video into uh -huh. those TV monitors when it was time to go to sleep? Something that was relaxing, that might have sure. a little soft imagery. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't even need that because you're going to probably try to close your eyes. Right. <laughs> but I mean, something like that that would be conducive to helping people sleep with the imagery and all uh -huh. that business. Well, you'd think for five or 10000 a day <laughs> that maybe you could get some kind of non-pharmaceutical <laughs> support to help you sleep. Well, the other thing that happens is when you're sick, many times the doctor orders that your vital signs be taken every certain amount I'm of sure. time, and there's treatments to be done, mm -hmm. and medications to be given, and sure. so what's more important, the sleep or the medications or the well, treatments? Well, I think it depends know? on the situation, but you're right. You're raising a good point. You certainly don't want to wake up at six in the morning with somebody saying, it's time to weigh you, or here, here put a thermometer in your mouth. These are, these are not ways to be doing things. And a lot of the time what we do is we focus on the convenience of care for the people delivering the care more than we do 
the convenience and the and the sleep of a person who's sick. Well, I mean, when I was learning to be a nurse, one summer I worked as a nurse's aide, uh -huh. and it was my job to take the vital signs of all the patients on the floor. And what well, time the, was that? Well, I mean, our <laughs> shift was over, I think it was over at quarter to seven. Oh, so you were getting up and at, so at I, six to We to were supposed to up. start at six, but I couldn't be finished by Right. on time so i started doing it earlier, earlier one morning <laughs> that's and boy, right did i get in trouble <laughs> i had some guy just yelling at me and he was so angry i think he got me in tears yeah. but it was like how could i get it done All so right. this is where the hospital needs to figure out what to do with the staff maybe the vital signs don't have to be finished by seven o'clock in the morning or maybe they can be done automatically now there are a lot of ways that we can put people on monitors to do that so when we're looking at sleep in the hospital, sleep is very important for patients. More important when you're in the hospital than any other time, because that's when your body's compromised and it needs time to be able to relax and to restore itself and recover from the illness that you have. So it should be done in a natural way that's safe, where you don't have to worry about falling and sustaining trauma.